All right. Hi, everyone. Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings. Welcome. Today I'm going to tie a pattern from one of Denny Rickard's books. You probably haven't heard of Denny, but he is a specialist trophy trout on lakes. He's been doing this for over 30 years, has published a few books, and he has this down to a science. Denny has probably caught more trout of five pounds and greater than anybody else living today. That's how hard he works at it. So what I'm going to tie for you is what he calls his all-purpose emerger. He says he uses this for calabatus hatches, which is a mayfly, for caddis hatches. He also uses it for damselflies. It said, he said he took a couple of years for him changing materials to really get this the way he liked. So there's really nothing special as far as materials here. I'm going to be using a gold-colored hare's ear dubbing. I'm going to go more for the calabatus slant. Uh, wood duck colored mallard fibers for the tail, some soft hackle, and a little bit of peacock. And uh, we'll get set up and get this okay. going. As a reminder, we're going to be tying Denny Rickard's all purpose nymph. I'm going to be using a Daiichi 2460. This is a 3X long ring eye hook. Now, if you have something like a 5263 down eye hook, that's just fine. For dubbing, I'm going to go, he recommends hare's ears. I'm going to be using a gold colored hare's ear dubbing. I'm going to slant more towards the calabatus. It's my favorite uh, lake hatch to fish. And for thread, I'm using Vivas 10 aught olive thread. We want to start back from the eye, at least a couple of eye lengths to leave room for our peacock collar and for our soft haggle. It's always a good reminder for yourself so that you don't crowd yourself out of important materials. Pardon me here. So we'll wrap a thread base all the way to the end of the shank. For the tail, he recommends wood duck. Of course, wood duck has been just about impossible to find the last couple of years. So I'm going to be using some um, dyed mallard, which works just fine. On a nymph, I like to have a tail that's about hook gap width worth of materials. Once you collapse it, it doesn't look that big. But just measure it against your hook gap. Always pull this directly away from the quill. That evens up the tips. Grab it and pull it off. Now this is also a size 12 hook. I forgot to mention that. And we want a tail that's about shank length. Measure it, transfer, one soft wrap here, bring your thread straight up and over and down, and that rolls that material exactly up on top of the hook shank. I'll tie this down to where we started our thread. That keeps that abdomen nice and smooth. And then for the rib, I'm using ultra wire. This is a size small and copper. I'm going to counter wrap this, so I'll tie it on my side of the hook shank. Okay, if you've done much dubbing, you know that you cannot dub directly up to the hook shank. There simply isn't room. I want my dubbing to start exactly at the back of the fly. So what I'm going to do is unwrap my thread a few wraps start my dubbing now and then when I wrap my thread back my dubbing will start where I want it to instead of having just blank wraps of thread. This is an easy hare's ear antron composite easy to dub nice and spiky and for calabatus I really like this color better than hare's ear. Hare's ear darkens when it's wet and it can become very very dark I like to dub about three inches at a time because I keep my scissors in my hand all the time and it's a good way to poke yourself in the chin if you have a longer dubbing loop. So we wrap that back. I'm going to wrap a tapered body again up to where we started our thread. Always easier to add a little dubbing than it is to take it off. stop right there. 
Okay. Counter wraps with the wire to reinforce the body and to give it some segmentation. And then break it off. Now the thorax is going to be peacock. And to help give that a little bit of bulk, I want that thorax to really stand out. I'm going to wrap a little bit more dubbing very finely where the peacock is going to go. And that will help bulk that up a little bit. Just like that. Right there, to leave room for our soft hackle. All right, as you know, peacock comes, you can get it in two varieties. You can get strung peacock, which is a lower part of the quill, the less quality. You just have to use more of it. But when you want your peacock to really stand out boldly, you need to use a peacock eyed stick. The best hurl is from below the eye to about a foot down. You can see how thick those hurls are. You use less of them and it, you really make that peacock stand out. So what I do is I just get, I'm just going to use three here, strip them off, keep them together. You want these to lay in the same direction. That way you can really utilize the fullness of it. I always cut off about an inch from the tips. The tips are just simply too brittle. You try to twist those, they'll break off. Tie these down to the end of that dubbing. Stand it up. Again, make sure that they're lined up. And let's see here. You get a nice full collar. Like that. You just can't get that with strung peacock hurl. All right. Bring my thread to the back of the eye in preparation for the saw hackle. I'm using Hungarian partridge, very common material. To measure your saw hackle, to make sure it's going to be the length you want, all you have to do is express those fibers, lay it behind the hook eye, and the length of those fibers will show you where they'll be on your actual hook. So if I lay this here, my fibers will reach back about to the end of the body, which is what I want, a nice full collar. I'm going to tie this in by the tip to take advantage of that fine quill. So express this and find a dividing spot. I'll get my fingers out of the way here in just a second. So you have a division spot. I'm going to tie this in like this wrap the quill back. So to prevent those fibers from flaring forward, I'm going to take just a couple of these fibers off of this side. This is the side that's going to hit the hook first. If you don't do that, those fibers will want to lean forward and mess up a pretty collar. Tie it in right at the junction that you made. Wrap your thread back as you tie it down. Now on a soft hackle, everything happens in about three thread wraps. So I've tied my hackle down. I'm going to nip off that little bit of a tail. You could leave that on there if you wanted to. And then I'm going to wrap my hackle back to the thread. So you're at the tip, so be very careful here. It only takes a couple of wraps. Most soft hackles are overwrapped. <coughs> Pardon me. One thread wrap to tie down the hackle. One thread wrap through the middle of the hackle to also tie it down. I'm going to bring my scissor tips in here and knock off the butt of this hackle. Like that. Bring this hackle forward. A good tool to use for this, if you're having a hard time getting your hackle to lay back nicely, use a half hitch tool. Bring it in here, push it back, 
Use your thread in touching wraps, couple wraps back. Keep that back like that. That gives you room to do a whip finish forward. So everything happens in about a three thread wrap distance for a soft tackle. So there you go. It's a beautiful nymph, lots of movement. You can vary the colors of the body, of course, but um, I wouldn't hesitate to use this on a stream as well as a lake or a pond if calabatuses are hatching. Thanks for joining. If you have any questions or comments, let us know. We'll see you next time.